The medium range model guidance on Monday, September 17th suggested a highly sheared environment would be in place across the upper Mississippi River Valley in around 72 hours. This would be in response to a deepening low pressure system across the Midwest beneath strong west southwesterly mid to upper level flow. The biggest question at this time would involve the degree of diurnal heating and its influence on the thermodynamic environment. Now the severe threat. Storms will redevelop Thursday afternoon and could be strong to severe in eastern Minnesota and western Wisconsin. The main threat is damaging wind, but large hail and even a few tornadoes are possible. And again, some of these tornadoes could be on the stronger side. By Thursday morning, it became clear on where the target city would most likely be. A group of St. Cloud State meteorology students, including myself, geared up for our excursion down towards southern Minnesota, and by 12.50 p.m. we were on the road. Uh, and I think that boundary in northern Iowa is going to be our ticket today. This is the, the Sigtor bullseye in the fixed layer. We're about 150 miles north of that, which is where you want to be. And we're going to, in the next 45 minutes, assuming we're heading toward the Alden area, we're going to be due north of it, instead so of north, 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 north east. Yeah. Hey, we got a gas station. Oh, yeah, there. BP and right, Cynics. So we'll, we'll meet you at the uh, expressway then. We'll All right, talk some more. we'll chill at the uh, the Arnold's Expressway in Alden. Right. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Okay. See you there, my guy. Cool. See you there. Saddle. Badger and polar bear on the move. Yeah, moving up, polar bear. Let's go. The environment looked prime. A 1,002 millibar surface low would deepen across the upper Midwest throughout the afternoon and evening, dragging an 850 millibar level warm front north of the effective surface warm front. A strong cold front would trail the surface cyclone. Most unstable cape values approached 4,000 joules per kilogram in the warm sector, specifically along the Minnesota-Iowa border. Effective storm relative felicity values soar beyond necessary conditions to support tornadic storms, as the warm fronts enhance low level shear. 0 to 1 km shear reached 30 knots or more across the western Great Lakes, and a strong mid-upper level jet stream was positioned southwest and northeast across the upper Mississippi River Valley. With these impressive parameters set in place, the first day one SBC convective outlook was upgraded to an enhanced risk across Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The two main threats, aside from the flash flood potential, were damaging winds in excess of 70 knots and tornadoes, including one or two EF2 or stronger tornadoes possible. This would be the first 10% or greater tornado probability to be highlighted over Minnesota in September since 2007, ironically enough, on the 20th. This will also be my first chase since May 16, 2017 in the Texas Panhandle, where the initial day one outlook contained a 10% hatched or greater tornado probability. Wow, that is beautiful. However, expectations seem lower given the anomalous, perceptible water amounts, as well as linear storm modes, given how parallel the deep layer shear vectors were to the main forcing mechanisms. Michael's car is reading already a 6 degree increase. Mike's car is reading, oh, now 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Did his car thermometer pass Dr. Kubesh's assessment? Let's start paying attention to any of these echoes showing up just south of Fairmont, Minnesota, Jackson, Minnesota, near the... Uh, Spirit Lake, Iowa area. Yeah, I think we found the war front. We don't need to go any farther south. Agreed. It's pretty cool looking back to the north and seeing the convection going up on that second warm front. The 6040 tornado watch gets issued at 3.35 p.m. for most of southwest and southern Minnesota. It seemed apparent to us that our only hope would be to latch onto a prefrontal cell established in the warm sector that is yet to cross the warm front. Once it nears and crosses the warm front, tornado genesis should ideally ensue. This best case scenario for our sake never transpires of course, so we waited in Alden, Minnesota until an organized convective system developed to our west.
The first of your thunderstorm warnings are issued about an hour and a half later after tornado watch issuance. We plan our attack and escape routes at a Sitco gas station, still in the metropolis known as Alden, Minnesota. We ultimately decide to cut time in half and pursue the 65 mile per hour forward propagating line of severe storms near the Minnesota Lake area. So we're going to head northwest to Minnesota Lake? Yep, we're going to head to our Minnesota Lake. Do you only have, you have radar so I can just have I have radar. These little echoes here are basically doing this kind of motion, cyclonic motion up into the, yeah. the northern part of this severe storm. There's a wasp right behind me. All right. Oh, that's a fly. No. It probably likes my yellow shirt. To your right. All right, well, let's keep moving then. Let's, is he in the car? Yeah, he's, Dude. he's like climbing on your phone right now. On my phone? Oh, yeah, holy <laughs> Oh, hi there. Let's, yeah, let's get her moving. Let's go. We have a wasp in here. We're scared. Think tornadic is going to be near the Minnesota Lake area because that's going to be on the northern apex of the severe inflow jet that's moving through between Winnebago and Blue Earth. Any bookend vortex could be back in here between Truman and Hampton, which but this is this would be a leading edge vessel vortex near Winnebago. That's going to be translating up toward Minnesota Lake. Hey, uh, mine thinks we might be going a little too far west. not be going further west than Minnesota Lake. Hazard 80 mile per hour wind gust radar indicated moving northeast at 70. Hail less than a penny size, that was from Bill Borgoff this year that morning. Just turn right on 614th Ave, 614, heading towards State Highway 30 that runs east to west. We'll hook up with 30 and go back east toward New Richland. All right, we're right behind you. All right, they're right behind, that's good, very good. We gain visual of the menacing shelf cloud north of Minnesota Lake. Oh my God. That is nasty. That is going to pack a punch, man. Oh my god. It's moving toward us at 70 miles an hour, man. She's going to pack a punch. That's 30 right there, yeah. We're going to be cutting it pretty close, guys, up at this intersection. Just beware. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. We definitely need to head east. We can go east! All we right. can go east! I don't want to get hit. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> we got to get east! We got to get east! All right, hold on. We're taking a right on 116th Street, a little shortcut to Highway 30. Our plan from here on out would be to take Minnesota Highway 30 east toward Interstate 35 and ultimately as far east as Rochester in hopes of documenting possible mesovortex vortex associated tornadoes or at the very least some dramatic storm structures. Yeah, get around this guy safely. That guy's, that guy's an idiot. What is he doing?
As the Boeing segment neared our caravan, a glimpse of a base likely associated with the Granada Mesovortex could be seen. We had no clue at the time that this possible embedded Mesovortex produced a tornado 45 minutes earlier. Or maybe it completely cycled a new Mesovortex. You guys see that tornado warning to the north? It's going to miss our original target of Bogotá by about 5 to 6 miles. Hey, uh, we're thinking of stopping at New Richland just to kind of stop and collect and get bearings going. If we stop in New Richland, this is going to take us over, and we don't want to do that. We're going to want to keep heading east on 30, toward back toward I-35, toward Ellendale. Alrighty, Ellendale it is. Once we get to Ellendale, we continue east. Continue east toward Blooming Prairie. Does anyone disagree or have any other thoughts? We got a little bitty. Yeah, we're good with continuing east to try to stay ahead of this. Hello, Ellendale. That is disgusting. Confirmed over Fairmore oh, Airport. Fairmore Airport. Yeah. And this might be something of interest down here in Medford too now. I'm starting to see a little bit just to our west. down by about a minute here in uh, Blooming Prairie, so uh, just keep your heads on a swivel. Hey Hunter, yeah, we definitely don't have time to stop in Blooming Prairie. We're just going to keep going for Stewartville or just head south. I'd rather I could have waited. Yeah, you're fine. Alright, so we're going to be going east for like two miles and then it's kind of staircases. Yeah. Nice. North two miles and then, yeah, we go back east. How much further do you guys want to pursue this as we continue east? I think by the time we get toward Rochester, it's probably going to be too dark to safely pursue this. We have to watch this area off to our north here. Yep. Looks like it's getting pitched up. Well, yeah, we're probably about to get steamrolled right about now. We're going right under the shelf. My ears just popped. We're going to get some pretty strong crosswinds here until we turn back to the right. Hopefully we can just get out ahead of it again. Here we go. Yeah, look at these, look at these trees going, man. The trees are whistling. Oh yeah. Take all the leaves off, just in time for winter. Rochester and then calling it quits in Rochester. Hunker down at the next gas station, we're not going to make it. Well, I mean, not with that attitude. I mean, the storm's only moving east at 65, guys. <laughs> That's like, now the flight I think you mean right above us. Hey, Mom. Right above us. Um, it looks pretty neat right above us, doesn't it? Are you guys going to be confirmed stopping in Hayfield, or are you going to want to keep going east toward Rochester? Because we're slowly getting ahead of this thing again. Slowly but surely. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. 
our caravan decided to split in Hayfield as my vehicle continued east toward Rochester. All right, yeah, we're confirmed stopping in Hayfield. Hopefully a restaurant so we can eat. I wish you guys the best of luck. All right, we'll Be do. safe. We're going to continue toward Rochester we'll and then uh, probably go check out any damage near the Zumbrota to Cannon Falls area on the way back home, all right? All righty, God bless. God bless, guys. Godspeed. All of that outflow. Here we go. You can continue taking that hype train to Rochester. We're getting off. Oh my god. So many leaves. As long as no trees fall down in front of us, we will be okay. Hunter, good luck. Don't die. We reached Rochester around 8 p.m., and night was quickly upon us, so Jake, Seth, and I decided to call it quits and head back to St. Cloud, but not before documenting some damage resulting from a later confirmed EF-1 tornado in Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Picture time, real quick. Second surge. Law enforcement, numerous trees down, power out in Cannon Falls. So we will have some uh, stuff to film in Cannon Falls for sure on the way back up. And it's the whole tree that's laying on the floor. Until next time, this is Hunter Anderson. And always remember that when in doubt, go east. We gotta get east! Alright, hold on! <laughs>